What's going on everyone? Exciting video today. I'm going to show you how I installed a SIG SAO trigger on my 229 Legion. Before I start with anything, like you saw in the little disclaimer before, it is recommended that a gunsmith installs this and I'm not telling you to install this. I am just very impatient and like doing things myself. So if you are so inclined to try this yourself, this is how I did it. It says have a gunsmith do it, so that's my recommendation. But if you're like me and you can't wait, this is how I did it. This is the sweet little trigger itself that's going in the 229 Legion. And I'm not gonna go too much of a long intro on this because it's gonna be a longer video because it's an install. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you a quick picture and we'll get right to it. All right, the picture you see now, there's two types of SAO triggers. There's the type one, which is the older style, which is on the left, and a type two, which is a newer style on the right. The older style trigger has two holes in the trigger itself. So the trigger bar has a pin on it that goes into the trigger, and that's how it holds the trigger on. On the newer style, the type two, there's a hole at the end of the trigger bar and the pin is on the trigger itself. You'll see the difference between them in the pictures. So the older style type one has two holes. The newer style type two has one hole. You'll also notice that the trigger on the type one is wider than the type two. So you can identify it just by looking into your locking block or you can take it apart to see which trigger you have. Armory Craft has been awesome and they hooked me up to hook you guys up with coupon codes. So if you want the type one, hammer five type one, all caps. And then for the type two, it's hammer five type two. And either one of those will get you five bucks off of a trigger. And yeah, so I hope that helps some of you guys out. And make sure you take a look at the triggers before you order one, if you haven't already, to see what you got. If you have any questions, I'll figure out what Armory Craft's email is and stick it below. Email them. They'll be more than happy to help you out. And let's get to the install. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the installation. I have a set of metric Allen wrenches, needle nose pliers, a small punch, tweezers, and a screwdriver. I've already taken off the grips and the slide. So if you don't know how to take off your grips or your slide, I really don't think that you should be trying to change out your trigger. So to start out, the first thing I'm gonna do is take out this L-shaped spring right here, which is the trigger bar spring. It's the trickiest thing to do, and I found it the easiest to do when everything still has tension on it. You're gonna, it's got a tab that's going down and facing up. So the easiest thing is to take your needle nose pliers and just pull it down and out and it'll come right out. After that, we'll go ahead and take the safety off. You're gonna need a two millimeter Allen wrench. So just go ahead and put it in the Allen screw and unscrew it. And then once it comes loose, you'll be able to take off the weak side first. And then pull the screw out. And you'll see the little O-ring, slidey O-ring thing. That will just come out. It just locks on that ledge. So you can just pull that out. And then pull the strong side safety lever out. Once you get that done, Go ahead and take the takedown lever out. Do that by pushing on the back side and then twisting it as you're pushing to get it away from the frame. And once you get it halfway out, just make sure it's towards the top and then just keep on twisting it and pulling and that'll come right out. Then you can pull your locking block out and your little locking block spring will come out with it, the little squiggly spring. And then we'll push out 
the pin holding the trigger in. It just pushes right out nice and easy. And you can take your slide lock off. That's pretty much the hard part of disassembling everything to get the trigger out. Now you can just wiggle the trigger and the trigger bar. You can almost rattle it out. And it'll come right out. And you'll see this is on the legions and a lot of the newer SIGs. It has the trigger with the actual pin and not the two holes. So we're just going to get the Armory Craft trigger. And put that pin that's on the top of the trigger in the hole of the trigger bar. Once we do that, we'll just gently fish it back into the frame, how we got it. So we'll put the trigger in the trigger slot at the same time as putting the trigger bar back in. And you don't need any force to do this, it just falls in. If you're using any force whatsoever, something's wrong. The hardest part, let's see right here, is getting it past the little ledge right here. that little ledge will be in the way when you're putting this in so just make sure you wiggle it around that and when you guys are putting this back together you'll notice you have your little safety plunger thingy here that hits the safety plunger on your slide and you'll see it wiggling down on the bottom by my thumb make sure that that goes in front of the back of your trigger bar when you put your trigger bar back on there the trigger bar will activate that when you pull the trigger. So just make sure that that little guy is in front and I'll show you part of that when we're adjusting the trigger too because we will be looking at this guy again. So once we have the trigger bar and the trigger installed, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything back together around the trigger so it holds everything in place. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your trigger pin. You'll notice on one side it has a slot. You want that going towards the left side or where the strong side of the safety is. So go ahead and fish that through the frame and the trigger. And before you put it all the way through, you're going to want to put your slide lock back in place and then slide the pin through both of those. You want to make sure that the flat head of the screw is going horizontal and that the cuts on the trigger pin itself are in a 45 degree angle this way with the cuts on the bottom. So once that's perfectly horizontal, we're going to go ahead and put the locking block back in and make sure when you're doing that, that your slide lock is pushed all the way against the side of the frame or the locking block won't go in. And if that screw is not pretty much exactly horizontal, it's not going to be too easy to get it back together. So here's the locking block. That little spring that fell out, we're just going to set it right back in so that it looks like that. Nothing holds it on there at all. It just falls in and you're going to hold it while you're putting it in. But if you have everything lined up, and it'll slide right in with a little bit of patience. Don't force anything. Nothing that we're doing requires any kind of force. Then we'll go ahead and put the takedown lever back in. To start it out, just set it in the hole with the wing facing up and give it a twist while pushing in. And then as you twist it back and forth, it'll click all the way through until there's a little bit left. Then before it goes all the way in, just make sure that it's facing up again and as you're pushing it down, just give it a twist and it'll go flush against the frame and lock in. So now is probably one of the trickier parts is just getting the little hook on this spring. It's hard to get a hold of so it takes a little bit of patience. You want to make sure the long arm goes facing down like that. Start it in the frame first. And then this is where needle nose pliers come in handy. I just grab it at the 90 degree corner and 
and then bend it until it goes in that little hole on the trigger bar. That was one of the trickiest things for me to get a hold of was maneuvering this spring around because it's a pain in the butt. But once you get in there, everything's nice and easy. And all we have to do is put the safety back on. So I'm going to start out by putting the weak side in the little cup that holds the safety. And then make sure that this cut you see on the trigger bar, right there, that the little ledge that you screw the safety screw into goes in that cut while you're putting it back together. And then the strong side of the safety. And then the little O-ring thing looking thing. I don't know exactly what it's called. And then line that up to where it's on the border of the hole. And go ahead and slide the safety screw in. And then you'll have to look down the center of your gun. And once you get everything lined up, just screw it in. check to make sure it works and then never pull the trigger and let the hammer fall when there's nothing in front of the hammer because you will damage the internals of your gun so if you're gonna check your trigger just make sure your fingers in front of it when the sear releases so it doesn't smash inside there because there's nothing supporting it but a quick function check Everything's good, and now we can start adjusting the trigger. All right, and then as far as the adjusting goes, make sure I got the right Allen wrench. You're gonna to want to adjust pre-travel first and over-travel second. The easiest way I found to do this is to reassemble everything except for your locking block and takedown lever so that you got your spring on, the safety, everything's all connected. And then you'll have access to the hole in the back of the trigger right there. That's your pre-travel. And then the one on the top is your over-travel. So you want to adjust the pre-travel, the Allen wrench will look like that going in the back, until the safety lever on, that we were talking about before the one right up here on top. Come on, focus. Focus. So that safety lever is flush with the rail. You don't want it sticking up above the rail. So you can adjust that as desired until that safety lever sits flush on the rail. And then the over travel is a lot easier. It's just on top, and you will adjust that down. The easiest way I found to do it is adjust it until the hammer doesn't work, and then back it off a hair. So you just tighten that down, and then eventually the hammer won't engage, and then just back it off until you find that point, and that'll be the over travel adjustment. So here it is, all installed. And you'll see a lot less pre-travel and pr practically no over-travel. The three, you'll see three black lines and three lines in pencil. The black lines were the original pre-travel where it hit the wall and the over travel and you can see the silver lines are the armory craft trigger so there's the difference in what you're getting so that's it again the coupon codes 
Hammer 5 Type 1 for the older style and Hammer 5 Type 2 for the newer style. I'll leave them down below along with the Armycraft's website and email. And if you're impatient and you had to get one of these in, I hope this helped you out. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them below in the comments section. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You can do that by clicking that little circle that pops up there. And remember, if you're looking for a new pet or animal, please adopt. There's thousands of animals looking for a new home, and that home could be with you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.